I remember the first time I met the Grim Reaper. He's even more terrifying than everyone says, but not for the reasons you think. The Grim Reaper isn't some cloaked figure like in the TV shows. He's not a skeleton who wields a magical scythe that slices through the fabric of the universe. No, he's much worse. I was seven when he first appeared to me. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was playing dodgeball with the neighborhood kids when our red kickball rolled into the street unexpectedly. That detail sticks out in my mind like a sore thumb. The red kickball. Strange how the mind stores random little pieces of information like that. Danny, you threw it into the road. You go get it, I said, crossing my arms. He grinned deviously back at me. I think we should make Maggie do it. That's what she gets for being a girl. Yeah, I heard she has cooties. Gross, Turner chimed in, crinkling his nose. I turned to Maggie. I could already see the tears welling in her eyes. I hated when they picked on her like that. No, it's fine. I'll get it, I said, shooting Maggie a smile. She returned a weak grin to me, her cheeks turning bright red. Thank you, Colton, she murmured as I trudged to the street. Danny and Turner chided mockingly behind me as I went. Thank you, Colton. Colton, you're my hero. I love you, Colton. I shot them a death glare once I reached the curb. They immediately shut up, and that's the last thing I remember before waking up in a dark, empty void. I opened my eyes. Logically, I knew that my brain should have been in full-on panic mode, but at first, I was filled more with curiosity than fear. I rose to my feet. I gazed down, trying to make out what I was standing on. But there was nothing, just endless black as far as the eye could see. That's when the dread seeped in. Where was I? Was this hell? Hello? I timidly called out. My voice echoed throughout the all-encompassing nothingness. I wasn't really expecting a response, but I got one. Hello? A deep menacing voice boomed through the darkness. My eyes went wide as saucers, and my blood ran cold. Do not be afraid. The voice continued. This is the in-between. You are neither alive nor dead but you do not have long. Soon, you will cross over to the other side. Normally, I'd be having a full-on meltdown, but the cadence and low rumble of its tone worked to calm my nerves. Still, it was difficult to process. How did I get here? Try to remember. I tried my best, but failed to dredge up a single detail that could have led to my demise, and then it hit me like a freight train. Memories flooded my brain like a tidal wave. A torrent of emotions surged through me as my grim reality sank in. I ran into the street to get the red kickball. The oncoming truck driver tried to slam on his brakes, but he was going too fast. I didn't stand a chance. I remember lying on the ground. I remember my friends and parents crowding around in pure shock. I remember the blood pooling all around me as my consciousness slowly faded away. And then, I was here. I, I got hit by a truck. I murmured, lost in thought. That's right. And I brought you here to collect your soul. I froze. Tears began streaming down my face. I wasn't talking with some benevolent entity. No, I'd landed myself in the worst possible scenario. So, you're, yes, I am deaf. I was silent for a long time. My worst fear had been confirmed. This was the Grim Reaper. Images of my life began flashing through my head. My sixth birthday party, the day my parents got me a dog, two afternoons prior when Maggie held my hand on the swing set. It was all about to come to a close. There were so many experiences I'd never get to have. Driving a car, going to high school, having my first kiss. I wasn't going to get to do any of that. My life had been so short and I wasn't ready for it to come to an end. After what felt like a lifetime reflecting on my childhood, death spoke again, snapping me from my reverie. Child, your time has come. Suddenly, a rectangle of light radiated amidst the endless blackness. I started floating toward it involuntarily, my legs betraying me as I drifted closer. It was no use. This was the end of the line. Tears clouded my vision. Just a few more agonizing seconds, and I'd cross over to the other side. It was bright. So, so bright. I don't know what motivated me to speak. The words just tumbled from my mouth, as if of their own accord. I shouldn't have said anything. Wait, there has to be something I can do. I'm not ready to die yet. I lurched to a stop. Everything was eerily silent for a long time, as if the Grim Reaper was deep in thought. There might be a way. I awoke in a hospital bed. My parents were sitting in matching chairs beside me. They looked defeated, like they hadn't slept in days. Once she noticed that my eyes were open, Mom looked shell-shocked. Then, her visage melted into one of pure, unabated relief. She rushed over to me, tears cascading down her cheeks. Mom tenderly ran her fingers down the side of my face. She gazed lovingly into my eyes as Dad stood behind her with a grin plastered across his lips. 
I couldn't stop myself from sobbing like an infant. I thought I would never get to see them again. Mom gently hugged me. I buried my face into her arm, wetting the sleeve of her blouse. And Mom, Dad, Mom released me momentarily, and both of them stared at me expectantly. I smiled and met their gazes. I love you both so, so much. That was the happiest day of my life. My parents showed me how much they truly cared, and that is a memory that I will cherish forever. Unfortunately, my joy was short-lived because Danny's body was found a day later. The official cause of death was a snake bite. He'd been playing alone by the creek just down the road from his house when he was bitten by water moccasins. Multiple of them, guilt gnawed at me like a piranha. Danny died because of me. Yeah, he could be a jerk sometimes, but he definitely didn't deserve that. I couldn't bear the thought of him lying there, weakly calling for help, only for his cries to fall on deaf ears. It must have been painful, too. I can't imagine how much he must have suffered in those final fleeting moments. I thought I'd never be able to forgive myself. Yet, the very next year, I did it again. On Halloween, when the veil between the living and the dead is the thinnest, the Grim Reaper visited me. I opened my eyes that morning to find myself in that same pitch black nothing. I wasn't afraid like I was before. It was what we'd agreed upon, after all. Every year on Halloween day, I was to awaken in that empty void and give death a new sacrifice. Hello, child. Do you have a martyr for me? That familiar menacing voice boomed. Yes, I do. That year it was Hannah Benson's turn to die. Her death was easier to deal with. She'd been picking on me all year, but still, she didn't deserve to die like that. Hannah was the victim of a home invasion. A burglar snuck into her family's house when her parents were out for groceries. Hannah had heard the intruder and screamed that she had a gun through her parents' locked bedroom door. That was all the man needed to hear. Instead of leaving like any sane person would, he rained bullets through the wood separating himself and the terrified little girl. She was hit once in the abdomen and left to bleed out on the cold, rigid hardwood. I don't even want to begin to imagine the amount of hurt I caused her parents. They had to pay the ultimate price due to my selfish antics, but I was still too cowardly to stop. Things continued on like that throughout my high school career and into college. Halloween would pass and someone new would die. Over time, I started to feel numb to it. I'd turn a blind eye and go about my business as if nothing had happened. And then, after this past Halloween, it finally occurred to me, why can't I pay off my debt all at once? A group sacrifice would be much more convenient than giving out individual names each year, especially if it's a bunch of random people on the internet that I have no connection to, and I've made a deal with the Reaper before. Who's to say I can't do it again? To everyone reading this, I'm sorry. I lied to you. The title says that it's my turn to die this year, but that's not true. You see, I'm a coward, and I always will be, so I'm using this site to my advantage. If you've read my story, then this Halloween, it's your turn to die. Don't try clicking off of this post, either. If you've made it this far, it's already too late. You should start making your arrangements now. I guess I should thank you, because due to your unwilling sacrifice, Death will be off my back for a long, long time.